hello welcome to my channel now before warned if you haven't watched these videos that sometimes there are um, images of people who have passed away or reconstruction pictures of people who have passed away um, we have an two Asian females okay and one of them was found May 25th 2018 Las Vegas Nevada they have her estimated age range they were able to tell her age was between 18 and 48 years old and they entered it they don't have her estimated year of death in here and her estimated PMI but that doesn't mean that they don't know what her estimated year of death or estimated PMI is because I've noticed in Nevada that sometimes they don't enter this information I'm not sure of their reasons for it but I'm sure they have to have some sort of reasons for it uh, the height and the weight they cannot estimate and there's no clothing or anything entered in this one and often I see that they don't enter the clothing with the sizes and the descriptions and the brand names and things like that that we normally go searching for to see if somebody was wearing that size of shoes or that brand of jacket or, or that color jacket and the color pants and things like that but with this one they're not going to have that information and you'll see why okay so this one was found May 25th 2018 and you can see once again I'm going to point this out they could tell she was Asian at between the ages of 18 and 48 years old a lawn service employee found what appeared to be a human skull remains while looking through the backyard of a rental property to provide a quote for service to the property owner police were called who confirmed the remains looked human and the Clark County Office of the Coroner Medical Examiner took the remains into their custody per the son of the individual renting the property the remains were purchased online and were used for religious ritual now yeah so I'm like what per the Sun they purchased the remains they purchased someone's actual remains online that were recent enough where they could look and tell the age of this person and the race of the person they bought their remains online to use them as allegedly to use them as a religious ritual because to me I would need receipts I would need their computer I would be going through that to make sure they purchased them online and that they didn't use that as an excuse to get away with the fact that they had killed somebody and put their skull in the backyard because you know how they murder people and they do things sexually with the skulls and things like that and they like to keep them around after they kill them some of these people so I would be like I would need all kinds of proof and I would want to know where they got them from and things like that right because easily they can trace um, you know credit cards you purchase it online you got to use a credit card or your bank account right and you're going to be able to track these purchases that's easier to me than purchasing it from some stranger somewhere okay now not only is this interesting because this is horrific that they're saying that they purchased someone's remains online but this is May 25th 2018 July 19th 2018 remember I just did a video I don't know if you saw it skeletal remains were found in a desert area in the backyard of a residence in Las Vegas Nevada with gray or partially gray hair um, very long wavy gray beard and mustache so they found somebody in somebody's backyard in the backyard of a residence and I'm wondering how far apart is this residence from the other residents are they close by um, do they have anything in common as far as the realtor the rental 
the people that are renting this property, are they friends or related or have anything in common with the other people where they found remains in the backyard uh, a month and a half after later? I just, you know, I'm wondering, oh, these remains are gone. Are they, you know, and now somebody else's remains are in somebody's backyard. I just find that creepy because it's so close together, okay? And then we have another Asian female. So we're going to go to her. We have another Asian female. I want to keep that because I want to use that. We have another Asian female found May 5th, 2018 in Reno, Nevada, 60 to 70 years old. Uh, it says Asian. She could be Asian. She could be white. She could be... I don't think she's white, though. She could be... Um, American Indian or Asian. Okay, this is a recent death. 2018, it has an estimated year of death. It doesn't have an estimated PMI, but you can tell it's a recent death. May 5th, 2018. They don't have her height. I guess they didn't measure it, so they're saying like 5 foot to 5 foot 6. And, I, you know, I'm wondering if she could be 4 foot 11, right? Because that's estimated. A measured to be 101 pounds. Um, the descendant was reportedly found in an unknown location in Reno, Nevada in 1999. This is before she died. In an altered level of conscience. The descendant has been living in group homes since she was found in 1999. And this is kind of horrific to me. Uh, she's been, she's given various stories living in Texas, living in Las Vegas. She's been using the name Diane Ashley with multiple birth dates and social security numbers, none of which are associated with that name. She gave a story of being assaulted and left in the snow, which resulted in bilateral lower leg am amputations. So both of her legs were amputated after she was assaulted and left in the snow and then found in 1999. She gives her race as white, but she could be Native American or Indian. She has a recognizable face. I don't know who she is. Gray or partially gray hair, brown eyes. So both her legs, her left and her right legs, were amputated below the knee years before. And even though it says recognizable face, I'm wondering if her family hadn't seen her for years, if they would know who she is. And so we're going to look at some missing persons for the skull and for this woman because I can't help but wonder if this Asian female wasn't somebody from nearby because they could even tell her age range and everything okay so let's see we have Abby Roberts she went missing September 25th 2012 she was 25 years old 5 foot 3 125 pounds um, Abby's missing with Philip Johnson and they were last seen September 25th 2012 and Las Vegas, Nevada. They believe they may have gone to Southern California, but they're not sure. Um, brown hair, brown eyes. Let's see. We have this lady, and I don't know how to pronounce her name. And I don't know if this image would zoom in or if it... Oh, yeah, you can see it better. She went missing October 6, 2007 from Las Vegas, Nevada. She was 5 foot to 5 foot 1, 95 to 100 pounds. She worked her full shift at Las Vegas at a Las Vegas casino. She called her family and told them she was going to stop and play gamble at Banyan's Casino in downtown Las Vegas. She was to pick up another person later after they finished their shift at work. She did not pick them up, and she's never been seen since. Black hair, brown eyes. Vehicle recovered later at a local casino. She's never been seen since. So then I can't help but wonder if, you know, this is her 12 years later, right? Or 11 years later. Ten and a half, eleven 11 years. Okay, then we have this lady... Uh, Kay Barnes Deller, February 5th, 1998, Las Vegas, Nevada, 37 years old, 5'3", 80 to 85 pounds. Last known to reside in Las Vegas, Nevada. They don't know what happened to her. She's never been heard from since. 
And with her date being 1998, to me, she could be either one of those. She could be that, that person with the skull or that other lady. But I don't know if she'd be old enough. 1998, 37, she'd be 62 now. 60 to 70, maybe. I don't know. Um, and I don't know if this could be her, you know, I just don't know, and then we have this lady, Melissa, Melissa Elizabeth Kerr, she went missing March 4th, 1994, Las Vegas, Nevada, she was only 19 years old, 5 foot to 5 foot 1, 85 to 86 years old. She was dropped off at her home by a male, perhaps a man she was dating. She's never been seen from since that evening. The boyfriend indicated that perhaps she had traveled to Lake Havasu for spring break. Red auburn hair, naturally brown. However, on the day of disappearance, her hair was dyed a deep red. Hair was cut short. And she couldn't be the elderly lady, but maybe she could be the skull in the person's backyard. I don't know. I don't know if any of these people could be either one of them. We have Amanda Lee Fravel. She went missing in 1986. June 13, 1986. 20 years old. 5'4 five to 5'5. Five five. She left her apartment to travel to her boyfriend's home. She never arrived. She often hitchhiked. Uh, brown hair, green eyes. So sad. Brown, bleached blonde with some brown. And then we have one more. Uh, Roberta, I don't know how to pronounce her middle name, uh, Gerard. She went missing November 22nd, 1993 from Reno, Nevada. She does have two pictures here. There's one. And there's the other. Five foot three to five foot four, 130 pounds, Asian. Last seen at City Fair bus number six at Lakeside Drive on 11 22, 1993. A co worker saw her exit the bus. However, she never showed up for work on that date. So she got out to get to work, but she never made it. She has congestive heart problems and requires daily medication, brown hair, brown eyes. Um, I wondered if she looks anything like, that was Reno, Nevada. And this is Reno, Nevada. I wonder if that could be her. It's quite possible. You can't really see her ears or her jawline and her nose quite well, but... Maybe her hairline, yeah, maybe and her hair cut, maybe could be. So, if you have any information about who these Jane Does might be, or of course this male that was also found in the backyard. Please contact authorities and let them know. If you have any information about what might have happened to these missing young women, if you, anything, even if it's a hearsay, you're not sure if it's true, it's not like you're testifying in court, maybe you heard it at a bar when somebody was drinking, at a casino, overheard somebody talking, 
um, please contact the authorities. And maybe you're afraid to come forward. You know, you can always write them an anonymous letter if you want to. If you want to make sure that they take the information down, because maybe you gave them information years ago. You're not sure if they still have it. You feel like it's gone through investigator after investigator, and they've stored the information differently, and they may not have the information anymore. You can always email them, and you can CC a couple of people. Like you could uh, email the coroner as well as the police detective and the sheriff's office if you like and make sure they have that information and or you know you could just call them if you want um, but any information that you have please contact authorities and let them decide what's relevant and what's important and please don't forget to stop and pray for these individuals and their families because they all have people who love them and miss them and want to know what happened to their loved ones that don't have closure. They can't, they've not been able to have a funeral. They can't scatter their ashes for their loved ones or anything like that. So please pray for their families and feel free to leave comments and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.